Hello, hello. My name is Greg. This is my first video ever. And today we'll look at NFT Art Generator, a tool I built. Many of you have requested a video on how to use it. So this is this video. So before I actually show you how it works, I just want to give you a brief introduction of what it is and who it's for. So typically when you want to launch your own NFT collection, you have to go through typically three simple steps or three steps. The first one is to actually create the art that might be uh, someone else, an artist, a designer, it might be you, you are an artist yourself. And you would use tools such as uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, Procreate, and so on to design uh, a design tool to create your art. Once you have your art and it's created, you want to create hundreds, thousands, ten thousands unique combinations of your art to make unique individual pieces. So those pieces are going to be most of the time images, they can be GIFs or they can be videos. Typically, how you would do that, uh, there are two ways. So the first one is hiring someone else to do it for you. So you need to spend time on multiple platforms to find coders, interview coders, and then eventually wait for the coder to create what you what you need, plus the back and forth, and then you pay that person a certain amount. The second step is you do that yourself. So in order to do that yourself, you either need to have some coding background, so coding knowledge, or you need to learn how to code to do it yourself. And again, here, if you have zero coding background, then you're looking at multiple days, if not weeks, to do it yourself. So what NFT art generator is, it is solving this step. So you don't need to learn how to code, you don't need any coding knowledge, and you don't need to hire anyone to generate your collection. You can do all that from NFT art generator through the user interface, drag and drop images, create layers, tweak rarity, and then you can look at the images and you can download uh, previews to see how your art will actually look like. And the last step would be to actually sell your uh, collection and you would do that through different marketplaces such as OpenSea or you can create a minting website so you would do uh, sell directly from your website. So now we know what it is, uh, let's see how it works. So I would go to the website and click get started so there are no accounts needed. Um, you can just try it and, and, and go ahead. So I'm going to start with uh, creating my layers. Um, I know what I'm, I know all the, the layers already, so I'll just go ahead and create them. I have a few, so I have a base, eye, mouse, and accessory. I will bring in my images in each layer. Just drag and drop. Okay, so we have all our layers uh, on the left. What you can see, five is just a number of images uh, in that layer. 100% means that when we create a unique combination, there are 100% chances for that layer to be applied. So it means it always be there. Typically, that would be relevant when you have accessories and possibly multiple layers of accessories. So in this example, I wanted to say that only 10% of my collection will have an accessory. So I would click on it, look at the right, and look at this slider and move 
uh, move it around to 10%. You can see it here, and you can see it here. So it means if I create 100 images, about 10 will have an accessory. So now in the main section of the screen, you can see all your images and you can click on your images um, to change uh, one thing specifically. On the top right, you'll see a percentage as well. So that represents uh, the chances for that image to be selected when the accessory layer is applied. So because I have six images, 100 divided by six is 16, so they have all an equal weight. But I may want one of those images to be super rare. Um, and the way to do that is I would click on the image. I would look at the slider again under file and I can move it. We'll see the chances for that file to be reduced. So let's say we about 5% of 5% uh, of chances for that image to be applied. So what that means is only 10% of this layer will exist in my collection. In those 10%, about each of these images will have 19% chances of being selected, except this one, which is about, about 5%. So now that uh, I've imported my layers, uh, tweaked the rarity, I can go ahead and start previewing my collection to see how it looks like. So the first one may be a bit slow, uh, but after that it's pretty quick. So you can see, um, I can see my first one and another one. Clearly mine is not perfect, but that's not the point of the video. And you can see some are animated because we do support uh, GIFs or GIFs. Um, so for example, this one, see it's animated. So I have an animated background and I have an animated eye as well. So I could have an image with an animated background plus an animated eye. So that's up to you to, to control. Okay, so now that I have uh, looked at a bunch of previews and I feel confident and I want to look at a rendering of many more images, I can change, I can generate a collection for free. So I can go there and pick 100, which is free, and you can change the number here as well. I'll just pick 50 for the demo, so the rendering is, is faster. I'll change it and I click Generate Collection. It's going to open this thing. All you have to do is provide an email address. Okay, so we have the 50. It's basically creating a zip file for us to download. And I click Download. So let's see what we have. Okay, um, so you can see I have 50 images. I can look at all of them. They look nice. Uh, see some have the accessory, but most of them don't. This is one, this is one. And one more thing that's really important is the metadata that's generated. Because if you want to sell your collection on, let's say, OpenSea, um, the layer names that you've uh, created are important. The name of your files are important because they're going to be part of the metadata of each file. If you look at the attributes here, so the trait type is the name of your layer. And the value is the name of the file within the layer. So make sure the name that you pick are the names that you want to appear uh, on OpenSea. Just OpenSea as an example. So let's go to 
just one collection so you know what I'm talking about. Just pick the first one, <clears throat> click on the properties. So arm here would be the name of the layer. So let's say background. Uh, yeah, background, for example, we have a background layer. A new neon pink would be the name of the file. So yeah, think, think about that when you generate your collection. One other thing I want to show you before I end this is um, the next step after this. So let's pretend I want to generate a thousand images. I already know it won't work because I don't have enough images, but it's going to tell me that I don't have enough. With all the layers and images, I can only generate about 900, as you can see. So that may be, may be helpful, to, helpful to you. So I'm just going to reduce it to, let's say, 800. But there, and I go to a payment form, but this part is quite important as well because it's give you a really good view of uh, the frequency of each file that you'll see in your collection. So you can see we haven't touched the rarity on the back on most of the layer except accessory. So we can see that only 2.5% uh, images will have a bamboo flute and so on. And the pearl, which was set to a very low rarity, only point six percent you can actually click on it to actually look at the actual number uh, of images you'll have so five out of 800 in some cases uh, you may have very very rare images and you'll see a zero here uh, when that happens you can click on rebalance and it's going to redistrib redistribute everything and you can check that uh, everything looks uh, looks good pretty much and uh, that's all I hope that was useful to you um, feel free to subscribe to the channel there are new features coming soon uh, so stay tuned for that leave comments if you have feedbacks or questions thank you